Right, let's start with the number one. This is his favourite, his main guitar. Probably the one that he's had for the longest. And uh, I keep reading on the internet various sites and things about these guitars and uh, everyone seems to get it wrong. They've said it's a 93, they've said it's an 85, they've said it's all sorts. It's not. I'm categorically telling you now that it was built in September 2000. It's a 2000 Les Paul Standard. Pretty much stock, apart from the strap buttons that we've changed. 498T in the bridge, 490R in the neck position. Nashville bridge, stop tailpiece, Grover machine heads. Um, what can we tell you about it? It's a very, very good Les Paul. Um, no frills, sounds great, feels great, and is pretty much the benchmark for any other guitar that we buy. It's beginning to show its age a little bit. There's some wear on the front there. There's some buckle rash on the back there and a broken uh, control plate which uh, I'll probably change over the next couple of weeks. Um, but yes, as I say, this is the one, his favourite one, his main one. This one's known as June for a couple of reasons apparently. One because it's sandy coloured and then the second because he, he bought it in June. Um, pretty weak gags I think but there you go that's why it's called June that's his main one that's his favorite that one will never go anywhere so that was the benchmark as I say and then in about 2010 I found its twin on eBay um, 2000 Les Paul standard this one was built in uh, July 2000 making it uh, slightly younger than the number one. Uh, again, all the same features, Grover machine heads, 498T pickup in the bridge, 490R in the neck, Nashville bridge, stock tailpiece. Very, another very, very good stock Les Paul that feels identical to the number one. It's got a little bit of uh, a little bit of damage to it. There's a, there's a crack in the neck there. Um, it's been repaired very well because it's absolutely rock solid. Never had a problem with it at all. And as I say, it's a perfect match for the number one, which is called June. And this one's called Terry. Um, and if you know your 70s sitcoms, you'll understand that gag, which is uh, pretty poor as well. But uh, there you go. Moving swiftly on. Number three. This is another fairly recent acquisition. Uh, we got this in, I think it was about 2010, probably very close to the time we got the uh, got the Terry. Um, 1997 Les Paul Standard uh, in wine red, so it's therefore known as the UB40. Um, another pretty bad pun, but there you go. This time we got the uh, copies of the Clusons. Um, on the headstock, uh, same pickup arrangement, 498, 490, um, Nashville Bridge, stock tailpiece, level 42 sticker. That's not a standard feature. Um, this one feels very nice, uh, sounds slightly, slightly lighter, maybe a little bit crisper than the others, not as, uh, not as rounded, so it's good for uh, more cleanish stuff, um, cuts through really well. But it uh, feels very, very nice. Um, I like this one. Not as much, though, as I like this one. 1979 Les Paul Standard. Um, I love this guitar. I think this guitar is fantastic. Um, not only does it look great, look at all the wear and tear it's had. That's obviously loved and lost. Um, it feels great. It sounds great. Being mid 70s, it's got a maple neck, which you can, with the amount of wear on it, you can see quite clearly. Five piece, one, two, three in the neck there, and two little thin wings on the headstock. Machine heads aren't original, obviously, and we changed the pickups in it to his preferred 
configuration of the 498 and the 490. Um, but um, yeah, what I like about it is a very, very thin neck. So even cack-handed guitarists like me who can't play properly can get a decent tune out of it. Um, what else can I tell you about it? This was apparently, this was the first Les Paul he ever played. Um, back in the 1990s, it belonged to a friend of his. Um, and it was the first Les Paul he ever played and, and was why he fell in love with Les Pauls. Um, which makes it a little strange that he doesn't really like it now and doesn't really play it. His, um, his taste in specs have changed um, and everything about this guitar, um, the fret height, the fret width, the, uh, the profile of the neck, all that kind of thing, is uh, not really to his taste anymore. Um, but uh, it's to my taste. I love this guitar. I would love to own this guitar. Uh, maybe one day if we have a, uh, a swap about, um, I can make it mine, but there we go. Notice the rear-mounted pickup for the Peter Green vibe as well. Number five is a Gibson Les Paul Custom. Now there's a story behind this. Um, anyone who's a Led Zeppelin fan will probably know that Jimmy Page had his Les Paul custom stolen back in the 60s or the 70s or something. Um, and in 2003, Gibson made him a replica of it and sent it to him. Unfortunately, he didn't quite like the balance and the weight of it and sent it back. Dan Hawkins happened to be in the office when the instrument was returned and put in an offer and bought it. Um, so this is now that Gibson have introduced a replica of the Jimmy Page Black Beauty, I guess this could be considered the prototype. Um, in which case we should have maybe kept it stock because we've changed nearly everything on it. Um, compensated nut up here, it didn't play in tune too well down the bottom end, so a Nirvana compensated nut dealt with that. That's now a lot better. Um, it originally had a Bigsby fitted, as you can see, there's the mounting holes for the Bigsby. That got taken off. Um, what next? The bridge was replaced. Uh, this is a Fishman bridge which has got piezo transducers in the saddle. So if you've ever seen the band live and you've seen this guitar going from sounding like an electric to an acoustic, that's why. It's because of those in there. Um, the bridge pickups also been changed. Um, a friend of ours was uh, involved with ACDC for a while and the pickup company Kent Armstrong wound some pickups for uh, Angus Young. Um, after he was finished with one of them, um, it fell into our hands. Um, we had it cloned and uh, that's what's in here is a clone of one of Angus Young's rejected uh, bridge pickups. Sounds great, very very crunchy. We obviously had it finished in gold so it matched everything else. Um, yeah, big chunky 50s neck on this one, not really to my taste, uh, but it means you can get a uh, you can get an handful of it, I guess. And uh, it's black. Black's very slimming, especially for a gentleman of my age. Moving swiftly on, number six. Number six is another Les Paul standard. This time in white. Now, I've never seen a Les Paul standard in white. And the fact that this guitar has the serial number almost obscured by the paint job leads me to uh, suspect that it's a refinish. Um, so what uh, what's hidden underneath the new paint job is uh, is unknown. I'm probably quite scary. There could be any kind of damage under there. Um, so this has had some bits and pieces done to it. Um, the bridge pickup is a Seymour Duncan humbucker. That was changed years and years and years ago before my time with the band. And nobody who's still around from anybody, anybody who's still around from that time, can't remember what exact pickup it is. But suffice to say, it's a very hot CMO Duncan humbucker, um, 490 in there, the Closens. Extra decoration there around the headstock and around a little bit of the body as well. All that was done by Lady Gaga. She was going to decorate the whole thing, but uh, I don't know quite what happened there ran out of time or ran out of interest I'm not really too sure but uh, for the best I think um, yeah 
one day when it's very very rainy I'll get rid of those moving on number seven number seven is Les Paul classic gold top this guitar actually belongs to me um, back in 2006 when we had a lot of dropped and open tunings and uh, capo positions and things we didn't quite have enough guitars to cover it so I brought this along and uh, it's kind of like remained here ever since uh, been a classic it had the 500T pair installed in it which were too hot and too bright for my tastes so uh, changed them over to the same uh, the same configuration as the others 498 and a 490 um, yeah uh, very very good slim profile 1960s neck uh, Gibson Clusons up there very very good um, as I say this is mine I brought it along to uh, for backup duties in 2006 and it's never really gone home um, nice snot green inlays there if that's your kind of thing um, yeah I might change that at some point finally number eight is the newest edition and this is a 2013 Les Paul standard we got interested in this instrument because um, Dan had a Jimmy Page number one replica um, and it's guitar like that is just it's just too valuable to tour so it doesn't tour with us anymore um, then when we heard about the specs for the 2013 Les Paul with the coil taps uh, the phase and the hardwire it was a lot of the same features that the Jimmy Page number one replica had so we thought this would be a good replacement for it uh, cover a lot of ground um, and it's nice looking look at the look, 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 look at the beautiful flame on that um, 498 and 490 again the reason it came with burst buckers I had to swap them out for the 498 and the 490s um, got the Grovers in, installed in it as well as stock um, so it's pretty pretty close to a 2000 spec Les Paul standard um, another reason we were interested in it so um, yeah that's the newest edition it's got a, it's got a compound profile which is thicker up at the uh, nut end and then gradually thins out gets a bit faster up towards this end up towards the dusty end if uh, you're good at that kind of thing I'm not so uh, it takes a little bit of getting used to um, but um, yeah very very nice right now we'll move on and have a look at all this gubbins down here there's, uh, there's some unusual and interesting things let's take a look at the drive end of things 